Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Rapid Recap on the Inside Nebraska YouTube page. He's Greg Smith, he's Steve Mark, and I'm Zach Carpenter. We're coming here from a beautiful day at Memorial <laughs> Stadium. The kids are out running around and we want to be outside too because it's been forever since it right. feels like it's been forever since we've been out here, um, actually inside the stadium. And it feels like it's going to be forever until we get there in the fall, but we mm -hmm. still got nine more spring practices to go. Nebraska wrapped up at sixth spring practice today. Afterwards, Terrence Knighton, Evan Cooper, and three players, MJ Sherman, Omar Brown, and Malcolm Hartzog all met with the media. Uh, Greg, what was just the main takeaway that uh, you had coming out of today? Yeah, I, I think from, from defensive backs coach or secondaries coach, Evan Cooper, uh, talking about competition, uh, I asked him about, you know, because Coach Rule, uh, I think, and Coach White both talked about moving guys around in that secondary and kind of getting them different looks to see different things. So I asked Cooper about that and what his early impressions were. Um, and he said adaptability, right? He wants those guys to be adaptable and be able to go out there and play different things because, number one, it'll help this current team, it'll help them, but also if they're going to have aspirations of making it to the next level, they're going to have to do that. You're not going to just play one position. Um, so he was happy and pleased with what they've done so far with that. Yeah, and with uh, Coach Knight, and I was over, over with Coach Knight, and lovingly, lovingly referred to as pot roast. He was he was big on the technique with his interior defensive line, uh, pad level, good hands, being violent, footwork. That those are all things that uh, Terrence Knight is working with with his interior line. Low numbers with the interior line because Ty Robinson is out, uh, Blaze Gunnarsson, who's more of an edge guy, but he's he's not practicing right now as he's working through some injuries. Um, but uh, you know, just strong fundamentals. That's exactly what uh, Terrence Knight and I almost called him pot roast. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence Knight. We time. accepted like, we Steve had, when yeah, Jansen, our digital editor and producer, he said he was going to put pot roast in the headline for the video. Yeah. So we accepted you with that one. That's yeah, fine. yeah, it's fine. But uh, yeah, and one thing that I kind of caught my ear was uh, Terrence said that. Nash Hutmacher was really stepping up in a leadership role, and that's good to see. And uh, he also said that Nash was really working on his body this offseason, shedding pounds, getting maybe, I think, to that 300 mark and not 330 like he was last year. So uh, Nash Hutmacher is going to be a really big, um, really big piece to the interior defensive line. So is Stefan Wynn, who's also kind of working on reshaping his body. There was a lot of talk about getting lighter, getting faster, because as we all know with this Tony White 335 defense, the, the D-line are, are gonna be moving around a lot and playing a lot of different roles. And to do that, it's, it's better to be more in shape and um, play more snaps and uh, kind of be quicker in, in the trenches. So that was pretty interesting to see. And another thing, uh, we, we also found out that, uh, so it's not every day that Terrence Knighton is, is coaching the defensive end type bodies. So that's like MJ Sherman, uh, Kai Wallen, um, Jamari Butler, uh, throw Blaze in there again, Maverick Noonan, Princewell Uman Yellen, uh, true freshman uh, from Texas, and another true freshman, Maverick Noonan. So he's those guys are also working with linebackers coach Rob Dvorak and Terrence Knighton. So it's not an every single day thing that uh, Terrence Knighton is working with the, the, the defensive end type, type body. So I uh, also found that uh, kind of interesting too. Yeah, that was my, I was over with Knighton uh, for mm -hmm. the most part. I uh, was over with Cooper, but uh, Knighton was the one that, who I uh, struck me the most and is for the same reasons when he was asked about who are some of those uh, the edge types. It's like, do we call them edges? Yeah, I don't what know. do we, we call, call them? them? We I don't, don't know what to call yet. them now. I just do defensive <laughs> ends, I guess, go to the traditional route. Yeah. Uh, talking about that, I mean, yeah, he was talking about how those guys, you mentioned Jamari Butler, mm -hmm. um, Princewell Uman Yellen, and MJ Sherman. I think you mentioned Maverick Noonan too, as Maverick the, uh, the guys who, are, who can work as a stand-up edge rusher and yep. get their hand in the dirt. Uh, Jamari was the one who I asked about because I was I'm just massively intrigued by him because oh, yeah. he's the only returning. Blaze is out, yep. um, and uh, Terrence was asked about Blaze's health if he's out for the entire spring. He um, he said he wasn't sure. He but, deflected that like yeah, a, he deflected, like a old pro like, would, like coaches do when it comes to yes. injuries. Yeah. Um, don't know yet if he'll be out for the entire spring or if it'll be limited. What his status will be going forward. So aside from him. Jamari Butler is the only one returning at that edge position who actually got snaps last year. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the position that probably has the most attrition on the roster. Not probably, it is the and position. And you lost so much experience in yep. that room, yep. too. Yeah, you lost uh, Nelson, Garrett Nelson, O'Shawn Mathis, and Caleb Tanner. Yep. Jamari Butler brings back 69 snaps. I mean, between him and Blaze, it's like, I think it's less than 5% of total snaps mm -hmm. from that position. So Jamari is massively intriguing. I mean, he entered the portal December 7th, <laughs> yeah. and two days later, he returned after having a conversation with 
with Matt Rule and after Tony White and, was and hired. His mom. Yeah, I remember, don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't forget that. Then they got they went <laughs> out to mom. dinner, I think, too. Yeah. Uh, Rule with uh, with Jamari and another player I can't recall off the top of my head, but there is a role for him. They yeah. they really yeah. like him and. Uh, Terrence Knighton does too. I mean, he talked about how he's been impressed with him physically or how he's been physically and just that athleticism, mm -hmm. um, the role he has. But MJ Sherman, I don't know if one of you guys was over, yeah, I was uh, over with, him. There with him. Yeah, and that, what struck me the most about what he had to talk about, uh, and our staff writer Jeff Ekstrom will have more on Inside Nebraska about him later. Uh, I know he's diving into kind of a more feature on that. Um, but what got me with him was talking about the tough decision to leave Georgia. Um, you know, you kind of assume in those situations, guys that are, you know, not getting as much playing time as they would want, um, that it's just a quick, easy decision. Hey, I'm going to get out of here. He said that was not the case. He really had anxiety about leaving Georgia. And part of that was just the kind of the culture that they had down there uh, with the Bulldogs and he knew that it was going to be tough to find a coaching staff to replicate how much they pushed their players down there and he's kind of said or he did say that he thought that he found that in Matt Rule and his staff um, and he's got very big goals about wanting to you know get to the NFL and you know have wealth for his family and all of that um, and so this is the next step in that um, evolution for him I thought he was he was really interesting in his time over there. yeah I just don't think we can undersell how important or how at least how much that stands out is Nebraska his coaching staff to a guy who is who yeah. looks like he could wind up seeing an increased role going in uh, further into his career with MJ Sherman for him to leave that program mm -hmm. um, and be mm -hmm. open and honest about that how tough that was and to, to believe that the Nebraska coaching staff would be similar maybe I don't know about on par but at least yeah, similar to a Georgia they have results like that yeah. right like you mm -hmm. can't go there but like that but yeah even for him to say similar um, is really tough, especially too, and I was joking with Steve before the fight, especially as we get into this weird situation where Nebraska versus Georgia on the recruiting trail has yeah. continued to come up over and over <laughs> again. Didn't have that on the bingo card for Matt Rule's first spring, but as you see that, um, that will be important, right, for those recruits is now you have somebody who was there who can tell prospective recruits, hey, these guys know their stuff too and they can push you as well. That That's an interesting little side storyline. It says a lot about the Nebraska coaching staff that they can convince yeah. someone like MJ Sherman, former uh, board line five-star recruit to come to the Midwest to a place like Nebraska which his family had never even thought of never been um, we did a feature on him at Inside Nebraska and, and they talked about the decision to leave Georgia too and it was not easy at all they loved they loved the culture there at Georgia um, the coaches loved M MJ Sherman so it was not not an easy um, decision to come here to come here to a place that they've never been um, so credit to, to Matt Rule and, and Tony White for meeting with MJ Sherman and, and kind of convincing him that he is a perfect fit for what uh, Tony White is trying to do with that three linebacker um, set. So um, yeah, just he's a very intriguing player and I think a guy who's going to be playing a lot of football in 2023 for, for Nebraska. Yeah, Fran Brown coming through in the yeah. clutch, stand up. <laughs> That's uh, right. Before we get out of here, Steve, Omar Brown, I know you were yeah. over there with him, just wanted you to touch on what, uh, what stood out real quickly with him. Yeah, so I think Omar Brown at 6'1", 195, he's a perfect candidate to play uh, Tony White's rover position, which is that middle of the field safety uh, linebacker hybrid. He's, he has pass coverage, uh, a pass coverage background at uh, uh, Northern Iowa as a corner. He was a big corner over there and he was a physical corner. He had a lot of tackles. So, you know, Omar didn't get into last year about like why he didn't play, play much. Um, but he's got a, kind of like a new uh, new life, just like everybody on the defense does with with Tony White, a new new life, new kind of view on things, um, just a fresh fresh page to work off of. So um, I'm really interested in Omar Brown, and, and he said he's very excited about potentially being that rover. And really, there's two other safety spots back there as well. Um, but that rover is is meant to play in the in the tackle box. He's meant to play outside of the tackle box, um, kind of just do a lot of different things, help out and run support, help out and. Uh, pass coverage and I think Omar Brown fits that skill set to a T really so I'm really interested to see um, if if he if and how much he gets on the field for sure and like uh, like we were saying Steve will have more on Omar Brown yep. um, he's gonna have a feature coming out uh, here later today I mm -hmm. believe and then Jeff Ekstrom is writing about MJ Sherman um, we'll be writing about I think I'll be taking Jamari Butler and Greg will be having some more takeaways uh, yep. and some extra analysis from Today's press conference, you can catch all that at nebraska.rivals.com. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Inside Nebraska YouTube page to get those videos dropped directly into your feed. But for now, Greg Progress Smith and Steve Mark, I'm Zach Carpenter, and we'll catch you guys again next time.